Hello, I'm Leslie Collum, Voter Service Chair of the League of Women Voters of Murfreesboro and Rutherford County. And on behalf of the League, I am pleased to welcome you to this candidate forum, sponsored by the League in partnership with the City of Murfreesboro. We appreciate the support from the City of Murfreesboro government provided by Alan Bozeman, Director of Communications for the City of Murfreesboro, and his staff. Due to concerns about COVID-19, the live audience for this forum has been limited to family members of the candidates. However, this forum can be viewed on City TV, on Comcast Xfinity Channel 3 and 1094, AT&T Uverse Channel 99, Roku, Apple TV via Cablecast Screenweave, Amazon Fire, Facebook, and YouTube, as well as on Diddy's website. We hope the broadcasting and streaming of the forum by the city on so many different platforms will reach the largest possible number of interested voters. The League seeks to conduct our forums in a nonpartisan manner. Key participants, especially the moderator, are never publicly aligned with any particular candidate or political party. The League believes that televised and streamed candidate forums provide an excellent opportunity for voters to become more familiar with the candidates and their positions. If you agree with us, please express your opinion about the value of these forums to the individuals seeking your vote. In the upcoming August 6th election, citizens of Murfreesboro will be voting to fill three at-large Murfreesboro City Council seats. Early voting starts Friday, July 17th and runs through Saturday, August 1st. For a complete sample ballot, and to learn more about obtaining an absentee ballot in light of the COVID-19 situation, please visit the Rutherford County Election Commission website at election.rutherfordcountytn.gov. Also, visit the League's website, lwvrutherford.org, to find other resources related to the August election. We thank you for your attention as you hear these candidates introduce themselves and answer questions about pertinent issues facing the city of Murfreesboro. Thank you for joining us and remember, your vote counts. Good evening. My name is Brittany Donasso, and I'll be serving as the moderator for this candidate forum. This forum is co-sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Murfreesboro and Rutherford County and the City of Murfreesboro. The League believes that the candidate forums provide an excellent way for voters to become more familiar with their candidates and their positions. It's my pleasure to welcome both our candidates here at the Murfreesboro City Council Chamber and our viewers at home. This evening, we'll be hearing remarks from the candidates for the Murfreesboro City Council. Before introducing the candidates, I would like to outline the procedure for the forum. Each candidate will be asked to make an opening statement in a two minute period. When all candidates have completed the opening statement, then several additional questions will be asked. The candidates will respond to each of these questions with a one minute answer, and the candidates will be allowed to make a two minute answer to the last question with any closing remarks. I wanna thank all of you, all of the candidates for their gracious acceptance of our invitation this event. Speaking first is Bill Shacklett, then Eddie S uh, Smotherman, Kurt Wade, and then Sean Wright. Mr. Shacklett, you may make your opening statement. You'll have two minutes. All right, thank you. Uh, I want to first thank uh, League of Women Voters and uh, City Channel for the opportunity to uh, speak to you tonight. Uh, I would, if you don't know me, I was raised in Murfreesboro, uh, went to public school here at uh, Murfreesboro City Schools, Rutherford County Schools, and then attended MTSU where I received a degree in urban planning. Didn't use that degree much until I came on council back in uh, 2002 and served one term on council back then. Took an eight year sabbatical to raise, finish raising my young, my girls, and, uh, and then came back on when Toby Gilly decided that he was not going to, well, he was actually elected for a judgeship, and that left that seat vacant, and we had a special election for that and happened to come back on. And found, I wasn't, was current, concerned at that time whether I still had a passion to serve the, our, my community, but found that passion again. It's a critical time in our community. It needs voices that have had some experience uh, in our community. I think that's something that I've leveraged. I've had two passions in the course of my 
life. One is young people. I've coached the league baseball for 45 years. I've uh, been involved in several programs in uh, different settings, the church and in the community, doing things for young people in our community. I've, I've done that all my life. Uh, and then the other passion is voting uh, and the importance of voting and what it means to our democracy. And uh, I was an election official for 30 years before I ever ran for public office. And uh, in, the middle, in the midst of all of that, I uh, established a lot of relationships in our community, uh, folks that know me and that I know. And I've tried to, in my course of public service, tried to leverage that into bringing people closer to the government that tries to serve them. And that's what I hope to do in the next term. Uh, thank you. Mr. Smotherman, you may make your opening statement. Thank you, and what a pleasure it is to be here with you guys tonight. Uh, thanks for the people out there watching because I think it's very important that you understand <clears throat> the importance of uh, electing uh, qualified and, and experienced leaders. Uh, I think our city has had a very challenging time recently, and uh, I think now more than ever, uh, experience does matter. Um, I, I could almost say ditto what uh, Bill said because our, our paths are so similar. I, I, I spent 40 years coaching youth sports here in Murfreesboro, and I think probably more people know us as coach than we do our real name. But uh, we, we've, we've got a great city. Uh, I've raised uh, two sons here. Both are grown, and uh, so I don't have any kids at home, which, which is really wonderful because uh, tonight I'm here with you guys talking, and tomorrow night I'm at Planning Commission, and the night after that I'm at City Council meeting, and, and there's probably a couple other meetings between now and then, and some agendas to study as well. And uh, so we, we've, we've, we, we are busy, and uh, the, the city is certainly uh, at a time of uh, uh, challenges. Uh, we're, we're dealing with uh, road concerns. We're dealing with COVID concerns, uh, race, growth, uh, parks, schools, all the services that the city provides uh, are, are experiencing uh, challenges because of, of what's going on with COVID, but not just COVID, because of the, the number of people that are coming into our community now. Um, when, uh, when I first uh, decided I'd run for city council several years ago, uh, it was driven basically by, uh, I was a small business owner, uh, owned a small business in Murfreesboro for 15 years, very successful business. And prior to that, I worked for 18 and a half years at Nissan Motor Corporation in the administrative side. So, so I understand business, I understand uh, our community, and uh, I'm excited uh, uh, for the opportunity to ask uh, for your vote uh, and to serve our city for four more years because I think that uh, uh, we're at the point now that uh, experience really matters. Mr. Wade, your opening statement. Thank you. Thank, I want to thank the League of Women Voters for having me tonight. Um, very glad to be here. Very honored to have served the city for four years now. It's been a passion and it's been a dream to serve. No, I did not grow up here like Eddie or Bill, but I do have a love for Murfreesboro. I have been here for about 13 years now, and I've, I was able to sit on the planning commission for nine to 10 years to see the growth of Murfreesboro. And with the growth and with the change, we've made some really critical moves in the city of Murfreesboro to put us on the map. I want to continue to be a part of that. I want to continue to make sure Murfreesboro grows in the right way and that this is a place where everyone wants to live, work, and play. Thank you. Mr. Wright, your opening statement. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sean Wright, and I want to thank the League of Women's Voters for having me also and the, and the other candidates for being here as well. Uh, I'm a multi-generational Murfreesboroian. I've, we come back several several generations. Uh, I grew up here in Murfreesboro, went to Murfreesboro City Schools from K through 8th grade. I went to Oakland High School. I went to MTSU, got an undergrad in uh, business administration with emphasis in economics and finance. I went on to the University of Memphis, finished top of my class with an MBA in finance. After that, I went to UTK, got more degrees with or certifications in lean process supply chain management <clears throat> and in a business sense, not a supply chain like an industrial sense. And I'm able to look at business processes to make them get rid of bottlenecks, make everything run smoothly and get rid of inefficiencies. I'm married to a school teacher of nearly 20 years. We have three uh, wonderful boys of 14, 9, and 3, and uh, they're all in public schools in Murfreesboro as well. 
Uh, I think uh, with my business experience and my educational experience, I bring, uh, as the only non-incumbent running, I bring a lot of experience and new ideas to the council that I think will be an asset to the council going forward. Thank you. We'll now turn to our first question. This question will be answered first by Mr. Smotherman. You'll have one minute to answer the question. In your opinion, what are the current greatest strengths and greatest weaknesses of the city of Murfreesboro? I think the greatest strength that the city of Murfreesboro has is our ability to communicate with our citizens. When I first came on the council, uh, there, there was no open mic. And one of the first things that I got implemented when, when I became a council member was the, 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 the open mic or public comments uh, at the first meeting of each month. When the public can come and speak to us about concerns that they have and, and, and communicate because we have to understand who we're talking to, why we're dealing with them, and, and how do we, there, there is no problem that ever comes before me in the time that I've served on this council that has been a Democratic problem, a Republican problem, or any other party's problem. Murfreesboro has problems. There's no question about it. It's like every other city. But when we work together, we can accomplish the goals that we need to accomplish. And, and, and certainly, I, I'm extremely proud of the fact that uh, we've, we've taken on the challenges that we've, we've faced. And uh, I think we've done an excellent job of managing them uh, up until this point, and I hope we continue to. Mr. Wade, in your opinion, what are the greatest strengths and greatest weaknesses of the city of Murfreesboro? I think the greatest strength uh, that I see for Murfreesboro, the quality of life that we have here. There's a lot of places that don't have the quality of life that we have. You know, that Murfreesboro is a good place to live. You got good quality jobs. You got restaurants. Before, we didn't have all those things. We had to go out of town. Most now, we can stay here and we can enjoy Murfreesboro itself. So the good quality of living is one of the uh, best things, I think, that we have going on here. Mr. Wright, in your opinion, what are the what are the current greatest strengths and greatest weaknesses of the city of Murfreesboro? I think by far the greatest strength of the city of Murfreesboro is the people themselves of Murfreesboro. No matter where you go or wherever, wherever people come from, when they come to Murfreesboro and talk to the people and speak with the people, it's always a sense of community. No matter if you're from here, not from here, uh, it, there's always just a great sense of community and caring. And I think that is by far the greatest strength of, of our town. I get to meet people on a daily basis that are moving here from other places, that are just moving with the, in the city, and they all just love Murfreesboro and want to hear, be here because of the people that are in Murfreesboro. Mr. Shacklett, in your opinion, what are the current greatest strengths and greatest weaknesses of the city of Murfreesboro? Well, I think, I think I like Sean, I think the biggest strength of our community is our people, the people that care, people that are giving, uh, people that want to be involved in the problems and the solutions. Uh, the challenge, I, I, rather than weaknesses, I'd rather say challenges, is for us to recognize in this uh, unsettling time that our differences are our strength, that we can find answers. I had a pastor, I'm gonna say this real quick, a pastor one time during a stewardship campaign said, you, we've got all the resources we need to, to ha do whatever we wanna do in this church. And he said, the problem is, it's that money is in your pocket. The answers to solve the problems of our community are in the people. And we have to find ways to respectfully dialogue over the difficult issues that we have. Uh, and that's to me is the biggest challenge uh, for us to be able to respect each other and find a way to actually communicate. Mr. Wade, the second question will start with you. What do you consider the appropriate role of city government in today's society? I would say managing the growth of our city and managing what and how our city is run. And I think uh, if you look back in the past, we've done that. We've made some very hard decisions on budget, taxes, which nobody wanted to make those uh, decisions before. We went 20 years, and I, I know that people don't want to talk about taxes, but I'll bring it up. We went 20 years without raising taxes. That did nothing for us. It put us in a hole. But we had a council that made a hard decision and made the right decision 
not to kick the can down the road to say, hey, we have to raise taxes. We didn't want to raise taxes. Nobody wants to raise taxes. But you can't live in a progressive city like this and not raise taxes. You can't have new roads, new schools, no police departments, fire departments. So therefore, I think we've got a council that have made really good decisions on moving forward and moving our city forward. Mr. Wright, what do you consider the appropriate role of city government in today's society? I think the two most important roles is I, when I, in my daily business, I get to hear the three things that people want the most when moving into a town. Is the town safe? Is it secure? Or is it, do I want to raise my children there? And are the schools good? And when you look at those three questions, that's what the city government is for. And by being safe in 19 compared to 18, our, our criminal rate was up 9.8%. So we got to get that better. Our school system is, is great. Let's make it better. And managing growth, we've got to handle growth in a, in a way that when we're going from one side of town to the other, it doesn't take us 35, 45 minutes. We got to be able to make our traffic, to make that quality of life better. Mr. Shacklett, what do you consider the appropriate role of city government in today's society? You know, a long time ago, they say the phrase government for the people of the people. And that we, we need to serve. Uh, the government's role is to serve the people in our community. And how we define that, how do we, how do we build consensus so that we know and sets priorities that are mutually agreed upon within our community. Uh, and that requires trust because you elect your city council not to do what you want them to do. You, you elect people, and, I, and that may sound shocking, but let me see if I can say it quickly. What you elect us to do is to think through the issues, to welcome input on the issues, and to ultimately have the courage to make a decision uh, that we think is in the best interest of our community. You elect people to learn, to listen, and to lead. And that's what I think uh, how government should function effectively. Mr. Smotherman, what do you consider the appropriate role of city government in today's society? The role of city government is to make the really tough decisions and understand that sometimes people aren't going to agree with you. Uh, but you try to make the best decision for the circumstances that you're handed. Uh, eight out of nine budgets that I have voted on, there was no tax increase. There was one last year. Fortunately, because of those who stepped up and made the very tough decision that affected us all. There, this year, we're in a situation where there's no tax increases, there's no reappraisals, and there's no borrowing, so the debt doesn't increase. This is a tremendous situation that the city is now in, and the opportunities that will be afforded this city because of the tough decisions that have been made in the past will, will continue to resonate through this community for, for, for many years to come. Uh, we simply ran out of land to sell in the gateway, which had, which had been balancing the budget in the past, and uh, tough decisions had to be made, uh, and we've made them. Mr. Wright, you'll answer this question first this time. Do you see a problem with some new businesses in Murfreesboro receiving property tax abatements at the same time that the property taxes for Murfreesboro residents are being significantly increased? Yes, I do. It, it's, a, it's a bad optics. Uh, if we're going to be raising the taxes on the citizens that, that bear the brunt of our city, like we said, our ba greatest strength in this city is the people of Murfreesboro. So we can't break their backs to bring in gov companies coming in here to get tax abatement that are, is literally taking money out of the taxpayer payers' pockets. Mr. Shacklett, do you see a problem with some new businesses in Murfreesboro receiving a property tax abatement at the same time that property taxes for Murfreesboro residents are being significantly increased? This is one of those questions that deserves more than a minute answer. <laughs> uh, you know, there's problems that and situations related to our budget and how we form the budget that uh, is a detailed explanation of why we do what we're doing. And a minute doesn't give you enough time. I, I think anybody, any of us that voted for that tax increase last year would be glad to explain to you our reasoning for voting for it. Uh, you know, I, I think the issue is you have to deal uh, to some extent w with the cards that are dealt you. And quite honestly, in retrospect, given what has happened in the last three or four months, uh, I'd hate to see if we had not done what we did last year and be in a position we would be in even a more difficult position for our city to persevere and to go make it through this. 
uh, at all levels in government. Uh, there's difficult decisions that have to be made. Some of them, uh, you know, relate to, I mean, government has to spend money, and it doesn't make money. Uh, government spends money. Sometimes we do it too well. I, I wish we'd be more, more efficient. But we have such a, a limited number of streams, of uh, uh, revenue streams, that it's really important. Mr. Smotherman, do you see a problem with new businesses in Murfreesboro receiving property tax abatements at the same time that the property taxes for Murfreesboro residents are being significantly increased? Uh, actually, property taxes are not being increased at this time. The budget that's presented right now has no tax increase in it. But, uh, the, to, but to answer your question about the uh, abatement, if you do not do if you do not work with businesses that are considering coming to Murfreesboro, which bring great job opportunities to, to our community, then, then you're missing opportunities of, uh, people tell me all the time, Eddie, you know, how do you feel about Nissan? Nissan changed my life, but we had to make sacrifices in our community to attract Nissan. Same goes for currently Costco. Uh, a lot of people say they want a Costco in Murfreesboro. Costco was considering Mount Juliet and Murfreesboro. If we did not make any concessions, that w business would be locating in Mount Juliet. It, uh, we, we have to make those sacrifices with the understanding that those businesses are bringing many jobs into our community that are paying jobs. Uh, I think that's very important for us to always remember there is a value to each company that comes here. Mr. Wade, do you see a problem with some new businesses in Murfreesboro receiving property tax abatements at the same time that the property taxes for Murfreesboro residents are being significantly increased? I think just like everyone said, um, we don't, we don't, we didn't want to raise taxes. We didn't, ha we had to raise taxes. But I think what really makes a big difference is just like uh, Mr. Smullen said, you have to incentivize business to come here. If you don't they'll go somewhere else. This is just how the game has been played and it's always been played like that. But what we've tried to do is look at for good quality business that's gonna be bring good quality jobs to Murfreesboro as well as have a good strong tax base where we're receiving money to come into the city. Mr. Shacklett, what do you see as the biggest strengths and challenges for the Murfreesboro City School System? Well, sad to say, my dear friend, uh, Linda Gilbert, passed away. Uh, and uh, I can tell you that lady had a heart for education and for, for educating the whole child. And she taught us all a lot about what education, public education, should be about. Uh, as government, all levels of government are going to have trouble funding the next year. Uh, and we don't know what that price tag is going to be. Uh, but I can tell you this, I, I serve as a liaison on the, uh, for the council on school board. We have competent, caring, professional people at all levels of our education system. And I am confident that as we navigate that, we have the right people in place. And, and as we seek our new director uh, to be the head of the ship, I think we'll get a, a great person in here and we'll continue to provide a quality education to our young people. And But the, the questions are not even there yet, so we don't know exactly what it's going to be, but I think the, the competency of the professionals that serve us in public education are there. Mr. Smotherman, what do you see as the biggest strengths and challenges for the Murfreesboro City School System? Uh, if you'd have asked me this question eight months ago, you'd have got a completely different answer <laughs> because uh, we all know that uh, when we're preparing students for the future, technology is the direction that we have to focus on. And we understand, uh, you know, that with our teachers that they, they have to have, uh, I'm sorry, somebody interrupted me, but it, it's, it's okay. But, but if, if, if we do continue down this road of, of trying to keep up with technology, which we have to, I don't think there's any choice, I think it's very important that we, we focus on making sure that uh, we, we give the teachers the tools they need in order to educate our students for the jobs of tomorrow. The strength of our system is our teachers because they are the people who are on the front line who are trying to educate our children. The challenge is an obvious one because we know that COVID has changed everything and now we're trying to teach children uh, virtually. We're trying to teach them with teachers that are going to be exposed to students who do come to school and, and certainly as the uh, community continues to grow, we will experience growth issues that need to be addressed. But Murfreesboro School System is phenomenal. They face challenges that no other school system does. 
Mr. Wade, what do you see as the biggest strengths and challenges for the Murfreesboro City School System? I think our strength is our teachers and our leadership that we had. You know, I think Linda had put in a great team over there. We've got a good school board. Uh, that's some of our strength. And I think some of our challenges is with uh, COVID-19 has brought in uh, to play. Uh, virtual learning, are we going to be able to make sure every student is able to learn at a good quality education and quality need as the other kids? And I, so I think if that's going to be the biggest challenge facing us right now as we move forward. You know, are our kids going to be ready to go back to school in August? Are we, are we prepared to do virtual learning all year long? Those are going to be the biggest challenges facing our school uh, as we move forward. Mr. Wright, what do you see as the biggest strengths and challenges for the Murfreesboro City School System? As a product of the Murfreesboro City School System, uh, their, their strength is educating the whole child and taking care of that whole child, mind, body, and spirit, mentally, physically, and educationally. Uh, the Murfreesboro City School System does a fantastic job of this. Uh, with weaknesses and, and circumstances going forward, uh, just like uh, other candidates have mentioned, with COVID, you don't even know how the, the system is going to move forward or how they're going to educate children. Uh, if you're going distance learning, do ever, does every child have access to the internet to do that distant learning? Do they have parents that can sit with them to go through and make sure they're understanding the lessons? These are things that I've, I've witnessed as a, a husband of an educator and children that sat down were, were going through these things at the end of this year. I think that's going to be the biggest challenge going forward. Mr. Smotherman, if elected, how do you plan on staying in touch with your constituents? Uh, I've got a cell phone in my pocket and every time it rings I answer it and, and that's how I stay in touch with my constituents. We go to neighborhood meetings. We, we, we stay in continuous contact with our constituents through email. Uh, probably gotten a hundred emails in the past week uh, talking about uh, people's concerns uh, with what's going on in our community and, and we certainly look at everything that uh, the information that they give us, we understand what their concerns are and we try to address them and sometimes it's something as simply as getting the brush picked up in front of their house and sometimes it's a bigger issue of, of whether or not uh, uh, that they've got a concern with uh, how their infrastructure is set up. So uh, we, a lot of things can be fixed easily. Uh, traffic issues always are challenging but uh, we know that uh, in the city of Murfreesboro that the bulk of our major traffic problems are on state routes. But the city has a plan in place that is going to put pressure releases in place that will help some of the communities that are facing challenges that have been designated as hot spots. Mr. Wade, if elected, how do you plan on staying in touch with your constituents? Well, I think it goes back to um, we. our numbers are posted on the city website. We have town hall meetings. We have You have access to our cell numbers. Um, we have emails. Uh, just like Eddie said, uh, within the last three to four months, we're getting 50 to 60 emails a day, and we're trying to answer most all these emails. So there, if you want to reach out to your councilman, you can reach out to your councilman, and we are available uh, at, at, at your need. Mr. Wright, if elected, how do you plan on staying in touch with your constituents? I'll, I'll be accessible by social media, phone call, email, in person, however you want to get a hold of me, send me a carrier pigeon. I'll, I will listen and I will communicate. Uh, shoot, I'll give you my cell phone right number right now. Call me up anytime. 615-838-0653. If you got an issue, give me a call. Mr. Shacklett, how do you plan on staying in touch with your constituents if elected? Well, I, I hope that's been one of my strengths is that I'm accessible. You, uh, I, um, business is in the downtown, and I've had extremely, uh, I think, productive conversations with right in the front of my studio. Uh, I'm willing to talk to people, certainly answered emails. The last few months we've gotten a, a huge amount of emails, and I won't promise that I've answered every one of them, but I've tried to answer every email that's been sent to me. And if you have a particular concern, had a concern the other day about something uh, uh, someone 81 years old had, hadn't had a situation where we talked them through what the circumstances were, answered their problems. Uh, and I think, you know, that to me is the, the joy of this job because you get to know the public that you're trying to serve. Uh, and, and that is something that we always can do better. 
Uh, sometimes it's frustrating because it in, in, infringes upon our family life. It infringes on our business. Uh, but hey, that's what we signed up for. And quite honestly, that's what I really enjoy doing. Mr. Wade, do you think members of the public should be allowed to carry guns on public property? No. I, I think that's the reason we always have law and uh, officials at our city council meeting. Uh, I think there is a uh, particular place for guns, but not in a public and a place like the chamber or any state buildings. Mr. Wright, do you think members of the public should be allowed to carry guns on public property? Yes, if you have a cons if you have a carry permit, you have a right to carry your firearm with you. Mr. Shacklett, do you think members of the public should be allowed to carry guns on public property? This is another one you can answer yes, and there's an addendum, or you can answer no, and there's an addendum. Uh, I coach Little League, and I, I'm frustrated sometimes when the conversation was to the people were the potential of bringing weapons to the Little League field with children there. Uh, I have questions about that. Uh, I've seen things happen at the ball field that uh, were uh, not productive for children to see, and I, you throw the component of a weapon in, in the midst of their anger or something. I, I would be frustrated with that. Uh, but a carry permit? Uh, does give you the right in Tennessee to, to go where you want to go. So, like I say, there's some nuances to this that require more than a minute uh, answer. Mr. Smotherman, do you think members of the public should be allowed to carry guns on public property? The Second Amendment of the Constitution answers that question. The answer is yes. If you have a gun carry permit, then you have the right to bear arm. Now, tr truth of the matter is, if you are a well-educated person with a gun carry permit, you should certainly understand that uh, you're in a situation that you conceal your weapon so that nobody ever knows. I mean, if, if I have one at a council meeting, nobody knows if I have a gun on me. But, but, uh, but I think it's best to, if you understand the circumstances and there are certain environments that you're going to go into uh, that, uh, you know, and, and, and I'm like Bill, I'm always concerned because of our involvement with sports and officiating. I, I think I had a couple of people that have probably shot me as an official if, if uh, with some of the calls I probably made, but, uh, the, uh, but, but I understand the challenges of, of trying to manage that, but, but I think that most people have personal responsibility and uh, for those who are carrying guns illegally, then absolutely not. I mean, it, uh, if you're carrying a gun and you, you're carrying it in violation of the law or it's a stolen weapon, then it, that gun needs to be confiscated and taken away from you. Gentlemen, this will be the last question. You'll have two minutes to answer it with your closing remarks. Mr. Wright, you'll start. What is your vision for the city of Murfreesboro for the next four years? As we've all stated how great the city of Murfreesboro is and has been and will always be, and my vision is just to keep getting it better and better. We can all work together. We can all sit down and communicate. Even when we have differences, let's sit down and talk. Sometimes you'll find out that that person that you have differences with is right. So let's sit down. Let's really listen. God gave you two ears and one mouth for a reason. Let's sit down. Let's listen. Let's communicate. And let's all move forward to make Murfreesboro the place we all want it to be. On August 6th, I really appreciate if you'd vote right to go change in the right direction. Mr. Shacklett, what is your vision for the city of Murfreesboro for the next four years? Well, first, again, thank uh, the League of Women Voters, City Channel 3, and yourself for uh, conducting this. This has been a, a, a challenging uh, time in our community's life. But I want to speak for just a minute to the most important person as it relates to this election, and it's none of the four of us that are up here. The most important person in this election is you. And for you to recognize, to lay aside any apathy, complacency, feeling of my vote doesn't count, or I can't make a difference, this is the time that you're not a spectator in democracy. You need to get off of your best intentions and do more than that, not just be a responsible citizen, to yourself, but encourage others. Each of us have a sphere of influence, our family, our friends, our neighbors, that we can encourage to participate in the process. It's not just the August 6th election. We have two very important elections coming up for the quality of life that we have in our community. And this is the time we need to hear the public speak. 
And I'm going to ask you to look for three things in the leaders that you elect. One that will listen to all points of view, even those that they disagree with, to try to find the truth that needs to be brought to the deliberative process. And secondly, one that have the capacity and the understanding and the intelligence to study and learn about issues. Because as we said tonight, these a lot of issues that we face are very complicated and they require somebody that can process facts and understand issues. And then someone that will lead. Someone that ultimately we're not voted we're not elected to do your will. We're elected to do what our conscience tells us is in the best interest of the community. And sometimes you agree with it and sometimes you don't. But this is the time the public needs to speak. And so the most important person I want to do their job is not just us, but you. Mr. Smetherman, what is your vision for the city of Murfreesboro for the next four years? My vision for the city of Murfreesboro for the next four years is for us to continue the success that our city has had with dealing with the challenges that tomorrow holds. We do not know what those challenges are because COVID is the perfect example of, of how things change and how quickly they change. But we have to continue to improve our quality of life. It is, is helpful in our community if you have the skill set and the experience to do that and make those changes. It also is very helpful if you have the contacts. I think I have every contact name of every senator, every representative, every, every person in our community that I have come in contact with. We, we, we communicate and we work together and our challenge is to make sure that we're working well, not, not just within our city, but also within our county because there are challenges that we face that are common challenges that will have to be addressed and, and I think we can do it. I, I don't have any question that we can do it. Uh, we, we've just done a deal with MED that uh, Murfreesboro Electric Department was a phenomenal department for our city for many years. But, but personally, I always felt like if there was an opportunity to downsize our government and let uh, the private sector take something over, then we should research that and, and, and know that we're making a good decision when we do that. And I think all the employees with MED were excited. I, I, I remember the uproar in the room the night uh, we made the decision to uh, sell MED. Those assets can be used to the city's advantage over the next several years. Those challenges will, will be abundant, but uh, we, we will have to address traffic issues and concerns that we, we experience every day. And, uh, but, but I also think there's, there's things that we need to continue to preserve our history. We need to absolutely educate people the importance of knowing your mistakes that you may have made in the past. And if you destroy your history, you not only destroy the good, but you also destroy the bad. And so I think it's important that we continue to focus on trying to bring new projects into the city of Murfreesboro and, and even erect new monuments that uh, would acknowledge uh, the, the things that have been given to our community. Mr. Wade, what is your vision for the city of Murfreesboro for the next four years? I think the main thing is managing our growth. We've grown tremendously fast over the last uh, few years. And I think if we continue to manage our growth to make Murfreesboro a better city, uh, bringing more white collar jobs to Murfreesboro and continue with the good quality of life and good living here in our city. And how do we do all of these things? And with what's going on in our nation, the one way we can do these things is we got to learn how to communicate. We got to learn how to talk, work things out, work it out for what's best for Murfreesboro, what's best for Relaford County. And I think if we do those things moving forward, we, we will continue to make our city a great city to live and play in. Thank you. Once again, on behalf of the League of Women Voters, the city's Murfreesboro, I want to thank all the candidates for your participation. I also want to thank the Director of Communications for the City of Murfreesboro, Mr. Alan Bozeman, and his staff for their help in presenting this program on Murfreesboro City TV tonight and making it available for later viewing. I want to encourage all Murfreesboro citizens to vote. Early voting begins July 17th and goes all the way through August 1st. You may early vote at one of the early voting locations. On Election Day, which is August 6th, you will be able to find out which location will be best for you by visiting the Rutherford County Election Commission website. If you're interested in applying for an absentee ballot, please visit the Rutherford County Election Commission at election.rutherfordcountytn.gov. 
Please exercise this important right to determine who will be on the Murfreesboro City Council. Remember, your vote counts. May we close this with a round of applause for our candidates.